The next question comes from Nacho. And Nacho asks, if you were a state actor that was comfortable say, carrying $200 trillion in debt and unfunded liabilities, how would you attack Bitcoin, given your ability to print money and run deficits? Um, could you spin up 100,000 nodes? Could you take over consensus in some other way? What does the network response to your most likely attack look like? Um, so thank you, Nacho, for that question. I think that because we're engaged in technology, we assume that the types of attacks that this system will face are going to be technological attacks. Um, but that doesn't really make a lot of sense. If I'm a state actor and I want to attack a cryptocurrency, I would use technology as the absolute last form of attack. Why would I go and play in the turf of the other party? Like technology is what we do, and we're damn good at it. And most governments are not that good at technology. Um, it's like trying to attack a young person on social media. They're much better at social media than you are. Um, and you don't attack a technology platform using technology. That's, that's not very good. You're going to lose that. It's asymmetric warfare where the technologies have significant advantage. No. I would attack it by creating um, uh, legal uncertainty. How about um, making it so that you have to file capital gains for every single dollar you spend, even if it's for a pack of gum or a cup of coffee, to make it impossible to engage in regular commerce. Instead of treating it like a foreign currency or any type of currency, treating it like a commodity. Oh wait, they already did that, um, which is why it cost me more in my accounting fees than in my capital gains uh, in order to do my tax reporting. Um, how about um, making it legally vague as to whether you are allowed to hold it or not to hold it? How about creating various ways of scaring the middle class and the mainstream? How about using propaganda and media and dropping announcements by officials about how this technology can't be trusted, you are likely to lose your money, and we are all drug dealers and criminals anyway? Those are much more effective. And finally, how about using paid sock puppets to infiltrate every public forum and start screaming and creating dissent and noise and drama and accusing everybody of being a paid shill of X and a paid shill of Y and lying and being fraudsters and scammers and creating all of this loud, noisy drama? I mean, who wants to engage in cryptocurrency when all of the people in the space seem so nasty and dramatic? Well, most of those people are not in the space. <laughs> they're, um, they're in fact uh, trolls who are doing this for fun, or uh, paid infiltrators who are doing this as a job. Just recently, we found out, for example, that uh, I believe it was in in Poland. Um, the central bank paid a YouTube artist $30,000 to create this laughably bad um, public service announcement type video, where they make crypto look bad by having this guy take his girlfriend to a pizzeria, and then he tries to pay with crypto, and he can't, so she walks out. Um, and it was just ridiculous. Um, anyway, th this kind of propaganda is definitely happening. State actors, if they want to attack a grassroots movement, use um, infiltration, surveillance, intimidation, coercion, blackmail, rumors, um, and drama. They've done that with every grass move grassroots movement in history. And it is naive to think that they are not doing it this time. Why not? Of course they are. So, um, state actors do not use overt, direct, and technological attacks, especially not against technologists. They are going to use uh, covert, underhanded, and mostly psychological, and reputation, and sentiment attacks uh, to attack this technology. And they already are doing so. Banksters versus Bitcoin. Ivan asks, as big banks, governments, ruling organizations are threatened or should be threatened by Bitcoin, eventually they will lose money and power. How do you see this big upcoming battle playing out? 
Um, it's very difficult to predict how this battle will play out. Um, I'm actually gratified by the fact that so far, the main reaction has been to underestimate the threat. And there's one advantage here, which is that incumbents, big incumbent organizations, historically massively underestimate the threat of disruptive technologies until it's too late to do anything about it. Uh, whether it is uh, Kodak underestimating digital cameras, and then getting steamrolled by Nokia, which wasn't even a camera manufacturer, whether it's a car companies underestimating Tesla, whether it's Walmart underestimating Amazon and online shopping, whether it's Blockbuster underestimating Netflix. Until very, very late into the competition, you were still hearing many of the executives of these companies saying, we have a hundred years of tradition behind us, loyal customers, the tangible quality of analog film, the eternal um, you know, joy of, of analog photography. These new technologies cannot possibly, will not possibly overtake us. Um, nobody will want to shop online. Nobody can really stream videos online. Uh, people like rewinding VHS cassettes. Okay, they never said that one, but still, um, hubris, uh, dismissive attitudes, complacency are characteristics of large incumbent organizations. So one of the things that makes me optimistic is that I think they will continue to underestimate Bitcoin, and and I hope they do for a very long time. Uh, until it's way, way too late to do anything. And even if they did figure it out and wanted to try to do something, they don't really have too many options. They can't compete against it, because the very architecture of these organizations is centralized, and they can't compete against decentralized threats. They can't regulate it out of existence, because regulation is the first thing that this technology disrupts. They can't prevent people from using it, because in the places where it is needed most, people are so desperate to use technologies to gain their financial freedom, that they will break any law put in their place and risk imprisonment, or worse, as we have seen in places like Venezuela. Uh, they can't intimidate people from stopping to use it. Um, and so in the end, there is really not much they can do. Uh, but Still, I'd rather they didn't figure that out until a lot later. Back Somewhat there? of a